the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals yesterday has lifted a block on Trump ending the temporary protected status for people from El Salvador, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Sudan. So now immigrants who have TPS, temporary protected status, they have been living here because of either natural disasters or because of strife in their particular country. That's why TPS is given 10, 20, 30 years. Well, Donald Trump is now ending it. And he was sued, there was an injunction, and now he is able to, as of yesterday, fully end it. For Haiti, for Nicaragua, for Sudan, it's gonna end in 120 days. For in El Salvador, it's going to end in 365 days. Now, immigrants from El Salvador make up the largest group of TPS recipients. There's an estimated 263,000 people from El Salvador. Paul Andre Mondesier from the National TPS Alliance said in a statement, to end protections for TPS families, including the more than 130,000 who have been risking their lives as essential workers in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic, would be very cruel. Well, it is very, very cruel. You know, the case is likely, however, and hopefully, to be appealed to the Supreme Court. If it is appealed to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court accepts that appeal, then the TPS protections will continue. Let's hope that happens. Meanwhile, Joe Biden has said that he will continue TPS. He is headed to Central Florida today where he hopes to shore up support among Latino voters. A recent poll of Florida Latinos, and by the way, if Joe Biden wins Florida, Trump does not become president again if Joe Biden wins Florida. And Michael Bloomberg has already given $100 million to commercials in support of Joe Biden. A recent poll of Florida Latinos show Biden leading among Hispanic voters 53% to Trump's 37%. And you want to know who ends up winning the election? Whoever gets their voters to vote. Because right. I think everybody, hey. for the most part, I mean, you got to be in a coma by this point if you're like, hmm, I don't know who to vote for. I think everybody has kind of made up their mind. I would find it very, very, I would think it would be very, very rare that you find people, probably less than two, three, four percent, who are like, I have no idea who to vote for. I would say 95, 96, 97 percent of the people, even if they say they're not sure who they're going to vote for, know who they're going to vote for. So it really comes down to, is Biden going to get his voters out? Is Trump going to get his voters out? If Biden gets his voters out in Florida, Biden wins Florida, Biden's going to be the president. Trump can't win the Electoral College if Biden wins Florida. If Biden loses Florida, Biden can still win if he wins Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Minnesota, Arizona. There's Nevada, North Carolina. He's got to win, I think, five out of the seven of those states to win. Uh -huh. But it all comes down to who gets their people to vote. Now, as far as TPS is concerned, if you are part of TPS, um, you will fall out of status if the Supreme Court doesn't take this up. If you're from Haiti, Nicaragua, Sudan in 120 days, El Salvador in 365 days, that doesn't mean that in 121 days, someone's gonna come knock on your door and look to deport you, simply because there's just not enough Department of Homeland Security official, there's not enough jails, there's not enough immigration judges to go and deport an additional three, 400,000 people on top of the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that they're already putting in deportation. Also, almost everybody who has TPS most likely has been here at least 10 years or more. They would all be eligible for something if you are put in removal proceedings. First of all, you're eligible for a full constitutional hearing, which will take two, three years to go through. And if you have been here for more than 10 years, you're eligible for something called cancellation of removal. If you can show extreme and unusual hardship to a family member, such as a parent, child, or, or spouse. So hopefully you have some family here as well. You could also try to figure out how to get a green card. There's lots of people who are hiring me right now and going through a process who have TPS. And there's another rule, by the way, there's another rule with TPS that a lot of people with TPS got advanced parole. They traveled home, they came back, and they used that second entry 
in order to show a legal entry if they married an American citizen or if they were going to have their children who are U.S. citizens file for them and they're over the age of 21 to adjust their status because in order to adjust your status, you have to show a legal entry. And a lot of people with TPS originally came without inspection, then got TPS because of the natural disaster that happened in their particular country or the war that was happening in their particular country, then was able to travel on advanced parole, leave the United States and return and make a legal entry on an advanced parole. Trump changed the rule and said that legal entry is not a legal entry for adjustment of status if you're married to a U.S. citizen or you're going to get sponsored by your U.S. citizen's son or daughter who's over the age of 21. However, a recent rule by Department of Homeland Security, and by the way, that's going to be another lawsuit, but a recent rule by the Department of Homeland Security says if you traveled before August 20th, 2020, it is a legal entry. If you traveled after August 20th, 2020, it's not. And I would assume that most people who had advanced parole have already traveled at least once. That's what's going on with TPS right now. If, in fact, this turns out to be true, what a, what a horrible, inhumane violation of decent and basic human rights this is going to turn out to be. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.